Hey there, artists and art aficionados. This is Daniel K. now with Breakthrough Art, and I am here with Bo Cody Begay. Cody is a Navajo artist who lives in Window Rock, Arizona. We met a few years ago when I was teaching at the Teller Mountain School, and we did a collaborative mural project in 2020 and 2021. And now he's teaching from there at St. Michael School to Window Rock High School, and also an excellent artist. Welcome, Cody. I'm very glad to be speaking with you today. Hi, Daniel. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Hello, guys. Cody, tell me as, a, as an artist and as an art instructor, art professor, art teacher, why is making art so important for you, for yourself, and for what you do for others? Um, art is a creative way of thinking and feeling and just getting um it could be therapeutic too i think um and that's how i i'm approaching it now uh at my age and just uh with my experience and um and that's where i'm at right now with art <laughs> can you tell me more about that therapeutic aspect of what art does um, I think it's just um, getting your mind off of, you know, neg negativity and whatever's going on throughout the world. Um, and just a place where you're doing something and concentrating on one subject and not, you know, letting your mind wander, but you're more of, you know, uh, what's going on. You're pretty much aware of what's going on right now, right here. Uh, so that's how I feel about art. And you have a, a very unique, unique perspective as an artist being Navajo and teaching. How does your, your Navajo culture influence your personal artwork? Um, it's, um, it, in a way, it's, you know, um, all about um, the stories behind the Navajo culture and with animals and landscape. And, but I try not to get too, you know, cultural. Um, it's just, I'm just kind of like, just brushing on the surface, I guess you could say, um, on the cultural aspect, but it does play a role and, um, you know, uh, especially the locations of, you know, these uh, areas on Navajo Nation um, and what animals symbolize, you know, what. And, and uh, you know, it gets pretty deep within the Navajo roots of um, um, the, as far as the culture aspect. Um, but like I said, I'm just barely, you know, brushing the surface of that. And there's a lot to learn in my culture and I'm still learning a lot. And, but yeah, I, was, I mean, I grew up here on the Navajo Nation and um, there's so many stories tied to the landscape and animals and people where we come from, our language um, and where we're at in the universe. So it, it, it's, you know, a lot to uh, learn. And I think uh, as an artist, um, it, it also, you know, makes me learn a lot about who I am, uh, more of a self-realization and uh, a reflection of where I come from. Wonderful. You talked about brushing the surface with storytelling. You have this, this beautiful painting behind you and growing up on the Navajo Nation, how did you get so inspired to create work that kind of blends with more contemporary type of painting? You have a landscape, yet you have this kind of a uh, very narrative story with it. Is that something that you learned yourself or that you kind of did a blend, like incorporating different traditions in order to create storytelling that, that ties into like landscape painting, but with all through, with narratives of animals? Um, yeah, it's um, combining a lot of um styles uh it could be a little bit of surrealism and um 
as well as um, it's a little bit more playful too. Um, and I, you know, I have fun creating these landscapes, but I also have, you know, the, like the animal painting here uh, with the horse. Um, it's a little bit more, you know, realistic. And I, I just like that approach um, between both. And it, you know, I, I just have fun with it, <laughs> creating these uh, artwork and um, yeah, and it could be, you know, like uh, combining uh, two different worlds, I guess you could say. Um, and with my culture, it's that's how we, you know, we we um, adapted in history. Um, you know, with colonialism and today, and how we're, you know, we have diversity, and um, it, it pretty much symbolizes that. Uh, my art symbolizes that. Um, but like I said, I usually have fun with these types of paintings uh, with a little surrealism in the landscape and more of a realistic animal. And just recently I've been, you know, enlarging these animals and playing with the perspective and, you know, the foreshortening and also just making the subject matter a little bit more massive, but not overtaking the landscape. It's a beautiful painting that I'm seeing behind you. Can you tell us more about this painting in particular, the the horse with the the buttes, and there's so much going on. I, I love the like you were saying this blending of realism and surrealism and storytelling. I'd love to hear more about this painting in particular. Um, so with um, this painting behind me, as you guys can see, um, this is um a spider rock here in Canyon de Chez in northern northeast Arizona and this is a a site that um Navajos have a lot of um stories in um it, and it you know could be cultural and it could be also um with the colonialism um for the culture part um spider woman lived here and the spider woman is um part of the story in the navajo culture and how she um has ties to uh weaving navajo weaving and to me that i kind of go more on that um type of um storytelling with how it influenced me and so for me um my i have grandparents and family who weave um, with um, wool on more of a textile. And so that's what this represents um, as far as, you know, um, the, the spider rock with spider woman. And, um, and then with the horse, um, the story behind that is uh, more, a little bit more personal with um, my background and um, growing up more a, on a ranch and my family uh, raising horses. And again, um, I kind of, you know, had these, uh, I'm just, I guess I'm, in a way I'm just, you know, it's a self-reflection of who I am and how I'm bridging, you know, two different things and balancing maybe two different types of um, cultures and it could be Western and it can be a uh, Navajo culture. And it's just, I guess, in a way living between both worlds and having that advantage. And, and there's so much that goes beyond um, the story behind a, a horse and the story um, of Spider Woman. Um, and the, the horse is so massive in scale that it has you know, it, it's larger than the buttes themselves. It could be what, a, a hundred, 200 feet tall. That, that massiveness, is that part of that blending of cultures, of the, the weaving, the spider woman, your personal history? How, how does, like, can you tell more about, I guess the importance of the, the beauty of, 
of that horse in, in a in a landscape of Canyon de Chez that has such history for your culture and your people? Oh yeah. Um so you know, this one I believe I um titled it Mustang and um and you know horses uh for Navos it it's um it's you know a powerful animal animal um that you know that pretty much helps us today and it could be more in a therapeutic way too um growing up with an animal and taking care of an animal as a responsibility and in my culture um well in history you know um the spaniards um introduced the horse to the Navajos, but um, in our culture, uh, uh, it says that we always had horses uh, even before then. And uh, that could be, you know, just reconnecting with um, our past. And, and today we, you know, we rely on animals to um, do some farming, uh, ranching, and overall, I think, like I said, just uh, having a having responsibility and being more uh, um, being it more, more being a therapeutic for us Navajo people. It's a beautifully rendered painting. Your your composition, the shadows, the massive size of the horse with spider rock and the river in the foreground. You know, it's extremely well done. When you when you look at your own personal history growing up in the Navajo Nation, your influence from your parents, your grandparents, and the and the beautiful textile art, which is so prevalent. How do you when you incorporate that into your teaching, for example, as you're teaching youth and looking at traditional work and contemporary work, how does that influence what you offer your students? Um I um kind of i guess explain diversity because uh the navajo nation um comprises of mostly navajos in you know in workforce employment and as far as demographics uh and even the school system it's majority of them are navajo and so a lot of them are going to college are going to apply to jobs elsewhere so i you know, just um, try to implement some diversity and how to adapt to other cultures. And so um, I kind of have that approach in my classroom and, but also, you know, keeping your tradition too and, you know, balancing both um, not being um, ethnocentric or, you know, being open to open-minded to other cultures. That's pretty much all I want my students to um, have in mind, you know, when they go off to college or workforce or training. That open-mindedness, how do you see, and you can come back on stage too as well, um, Cody, how do you see the, this, this ability to teach open-mindedness, how to creating your art with this beautiful blend, cultural blend of your own personal culture with more con other other contemporary modalities. How do you see that helping to, I guess, bridge bridge these gaps, um, socially, politically, environmentally, and culturally that are, that are within our country and our world, so that art itself can be that therapeutic tool, that ability to get in the zone. You know, when we look at this next generation as an educator and as a painter, how do you foresee art being that? that tool, that, that, that piece of, piece of possibility that people could tap into? Um, I think just, um, same thing, keeping uh, an open mind to other people, other cultures in the surrounding areas and, um, not, um, you know, uh, I guess being uh, like judging, mm -hmm. you know, type of art, like, oh, I see a, 
uh, a pottery painting that must be you know, Native American or this and that, you know, as far as, um, you know, socially, just, um, I think just to see each other as people is my, my goal, not to categorize, you know, Native American, you know, and, you know, other ethnicities, but just to be accepted as uh, an artist. Um, and that's what I try to bring into my art as a contemporary artist. Um, and, you know, um, and that's a very good question. Um, as far as, you know, um, you know, in a diverse group of people. As a contemporary artist, where do you see yourself going next? Like, what are some other big ideas that you have going into this year or years to come that you want to you want to do as an artist with your work personally? I want to enter some shows um, in the in this, just in the local area in the region. Um, and I think my art is more appealing to the Southwest region uh, here on the Navajo Nation. Um, and uh, I don't really have any other specific places. The only places I've uh, showed at um, was at um, the Santa Fe Indian Market last year in um, August. And, but I'll you know continue to look around maybe there in Colorado, the Rango area, um, and probably in Phoenix, Scottsdale area. So, yeah, just trying different venues, different uh, markets um, in, in the region. Do you have more pieces like this that are a, a surreal process of kind of the, this animal folklore mixed with, you know, very specific sacred sites? And um yeah i do story. um i yeah i have some other paintings um that are very similar to this one and some are with some figures um, human figures and i'm working on one right now with the grand canyon and that one i want to put an eagle in there um oh hold on please sorry all right he's got some beautiful artwork it's really impressive to see this landscape with a surreal perspective this this mustang and a sacred site of, of spider rock having spent time myself in different areas in the southwest and utah and in arizona it's just wonderful to see you cody kind of tying together your cultural history with your artwork with the paintings and, and you know must be such a wonderful influence for you do you share this work with some of your students as well uh, yeah, I um, try to, you know, have um, them uh, think about who they are as well. Um, more of a self-realization is what I come back to. And um, and that's pretty much the base, I think, the base of an artist or anyone um, with any type of skill would go back to the basic and, um, but, you know, make it their own as well. Mm -hmm. the, the idea of the self-reflection, art being therapeutic, I always like to consider that every piece of art we make is, is like doing a self-portrait. What it's coming out of us, it's coming through us. And then we end up kind of developing something that's really beautiful or something that's not, but we have this process of creation. And, you know, that's a, it seems like you're tapping into that storytelling of the process as well in your own artwork, which is a really, you know, just a big narrative. It's a lot for in this, in this world right now for people to see that narrative of creation and storytelling to, en to enable something that the viewer and themselves can actually have a connection with the artwork and then have be touched themselves to, you know, their own personal story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, um, like I said, I have fun creating these paintings and I, you know, the aesthetic part is something that I just put together. I don't really plan it out. Um, I try to just, you know, get the work on there and, and I get ideas, you know, as I'm going along and, um, 
so that's that's usually how my process works but it's you know everything uh it'll some ideas will change on the process and uh, that's the i think that's just the creative process you know um and having my i guess my culture and my background my experience it, it just you know gets onto the canvas and the best way i can and the you know the way i think it you know should be for me um for my you know for my like <laughs> mm -hmm. well excellent excellent cody do you have anything else you'd like to share about your process about your knowledge as an artist about your um the the subject matter your students your school your culture anything that you'd want to share further that we haven't talked about because it's been a great pleasure to speak with you and hear about what you're doing and you know please do say anything else that comes up for you right now um i just want everyone to be creative um whether it's painting sculptures uh, writing um anything um creative um just creating something and it doesn't have to be for sale doesn't have to be for work it, you know just um create something for you know a few minutes to an hour and um you'll probably feel a lot a lot of relief afterwards um and um like for me i try not to shoot for perfection. I just, like I said, I just get the subject matter on there and however it turns out, it, that's the way it is. And um, I'm okay with that and just accept, you know, what the outcome is. And so, yeah, just be creative. And that's such a nice thing. And that's what I love too, you know, that there's so many ways to be creative, you know, like it, you could be, making a puzzle can be creative and you know weaving is extremely creative the the navajo rugs that i've seen have been always exceptional and when i've traveled to other cultures too like in in guatemala the weaving there is just you know mesmerizing as well there's just so many ways to touch into that creativity and i fully agree with you a few minutes an hour it allows that relief it allows that therapeutic process to to be able to to let go, to not be on a screen, not be on our phone, looking at other stuff, but to be actually in the process of making something through our hands and our eyes, using our fingers, you know, it could be sculptural, it could be two dimensional. So that, that's, that's wonderful, a wonderful concept and something that I think more of us do, the, the more relaxed, what more peaceful we'll all be tapping into that creative aspect of ourselves. Well, I do look forward to visiting you on my one of my next road trips across to California and hoping to be able to meet up with you again and to, to see some of your artwork in person. It's been a few years and I really do appreciate Cody you, you coming on here and illuminating us with your creative process, your beautiful artwork, your storytelling. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me, Daniel. And it's been great uh, talking to you and chatting with you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you all for watching. We'll have uh, more interviews to come. And we're very, very pleased. And thank you so much for Cody Begay to take time out of your day and to share your creative art. All right, y'all. Keep making work. Get out there and be creative.